Bunkers and Rust are nothing new. I first done my initial bunker in June 2017, but since then, with all the build mechanic changes, bunkers have changed dramatically. Where you could used to be able to put a wall into foundation, you now have to use half walls along with roofs, different variations, but they're still extremely possible and extremely strong. Now, I tried to make a solo base which was going to use minimal HQM. I managed to get it down to roughly about 60 HQ per day. Now, I'm playing on a official server as a duo and rocking 103 a day. It is manageable, but it is time consuming. So I think 63 is a good compromise. Now, like the majority of bunkers, they use the roof piece and the twig technique. Inside the main bunker itself is for your critical loot only, nothing else. Now, I'm not going to show you where to put boxes, etc., where to put benches, the self explanatory, and the personal preference. Just bear in mind that you struggle to put shells flush against walls when armoured is in place. Now, I will show different variations of how to do this because I've also got a starter base that you can use as well using this footprint. It isn't ideal, it does use about 3k stone. I know a lot of snowflakes who say that's a lot, it's really not, but this will get you started for this base quite easily. Now, garage doors are going to be your best friend. Now, with the actual core being 15 rockets minimum, the additional doors and these pieces here will mean an additional 8 rockets is required if someone tries to go through the walls. Now, this is dead space to me, I don't see the point in filling this up with anything too dramatic. So I've used this area which will show in the build just to strengthen up the main core to stop people getting in easily from the sides. Again, you may only have stone at the time, you can't stop every raider because you don't know who or what they've got is coming your way. Now upstairs I've just kept it very simple and basic, having six furnaces. If you don't have a ladder hatch, you can use this jump, it can be quite awkward. Then again, I am not the best person for parkour in this game, so you may find it a hell of a lot easier. Now, upstairs, a lot of people always say that I don't do enough shooting floors, so I've tried to implement something in a way of a shooting floor using the bulletproof windows. Now, they can come off quite easily and be repaired quite easily. The turrets are there for show. I do understand that not a lot of people have the chance to get turrets or as many turrets as this. However, if you do, these are just suggested places and the best places to put them. This will stop people from instantly just laddering up and getting into the base for the easier points. Now, as I said, bunkers have been around for a while, people are starting to expect them. Now, the way I've done this gives the full core, and when you lock it up at night, you're going to have to sacrifice that HQM to put it up and drop it back down. As ever, it's extremely important, do not upgrade the twig floor, or you just won't get back into your bunker, or out of it, if you've done it from inside. Now. On the outside, you can see, I've put quite a lot of turrets, as I said, all around it. Now, the reason for this is simple. As a solo player, you need as much help and defence as you can. Now, you can see how much it costs on the screen now. That is not hard to get. Now, people will say that it's very, very high amounts of resources. It honestly isn't. If you play the game, actually leave your base, don't be a snowflake you should be able to do it. Now this is the main core, when this is all armoured up with the roof, this is 15 rockets from any point, regardless, it's 15 rockets. So anything you build up from this is going to add to that raid count. Now I'm not going to suggest any lock numbers for this base because you may build it differently from how I built it, and you may have stone in place where I have metal. Now the starter base, as I said, is this. This is just a suggested starter base that you can use, not very strong because it doesn't have like a decent airlock, however it can be put in place very very easily. It doesn't cost a lot either, it costs about 3k stone, 1k wood, that is not a lot, that's 3 nodes and 2 trees, it's not hard at all. Now, key for this is the raised foundations, make sure you do them in stone straight away, do not do them in wood because someone will just crawl underneath and get them. Some people may think that's self-explanatory, but trust me, some people will possibly watch this and try doing it in wood. It ain't gonna work. Now, when you do this airlock, you're gonna have to do it in wood because you have to break it out. As I said, this is only a suggested airlock. You can do whatever you wish. If you have enough resources, just fire straight in, get it all up, or have a little starter base of your choosing. 
to the side and just keep building it as you go along. Now this is, as I said, just to get you started, nothing else. It's just a lot of people ask for a starter base. I personally like to have a starter base in every base that I do. And this is the best and cheapest one that I could find. But again, it doesn't have that airlock that you require. Now once that's done, you're secure. But I would not leave that for too long. Try and build out as soon as you can. So guys, we'll jump straight into the build. I will show you the full footprint first, in case you just want to use the footprint. And from there, we'll jump straight into it. Now, as I said, this is the main footprint itself. This is exactly as it is in the main base itself. Now, you'll see from the square that was missing, that's where the roof would go. Now, to make this is extremely easy. It starts with one of my original solo bases that I first done. Now, this is extremely strong as a solo base itself because you can get a lot of doors and a lot of storage into this shape. Now, using higher foundations, I am using B grade, so automatically everything's going to stone. This tile here, that will be twig, just bear that in mind. I will take that away throughout this so you know. Again, this is going to be done in a way where you can see it built up in stages. So this is going to be your main stage you're going to try and achieve first. Just bear in mind, once you place walls, you're going to be stuck with them. So plan out how you want the inside your base to be, where you want your TC, are you going to have your workbench down here, or are you going to put it somewhere else inside your base. Now once it's all locked up, that's where the decisions have to start. Are you going to use double doors, garage doors? Are you going to put your furnaces downstairs? Plan that out beforehand. So at the moment, you're going to have one main door. Again, you're not going to have much of an airlock because of the way you're doing it. You're going to have to build out from that, but it's just one of the risks you're going to have to take to make sure you can build it progressively. Again, if you are using a starter base out with this, then you're fine. Now, I'm going to go for the bulletproof window for the TC. I tried to put the unlootable TC in this, but it was just it was too much hassle, to be honest. You can try and do it yourself, by all means, but it just didn't really make any sense. Now inside, you're only going to want to do the floor and metal, because if they get to that stage, then they're already there basically. Now once this stage is done, you're going to start working your way out. Now I'll do all the foundations and how it's built, because I am a big, big advocate of doing your base differently inside. If every base looks the same, people are going to know exactly how to get it, and it will surprise you how many people actually look on YouTube to see if they can see the base for the easiest way to raid it. That's why I tried to make sure the core was a solid 15 rockets, regardless of from where you come in. Now, as I said before, these sections are critical. These have to be half walls, because if these aren't armoured up, they can literally just peek in through the roof and shoot down, take out the twig, and it drops it down anyway. So this gives it the full 15 rockets all the way around. Now, I will not go through this whole video, I will just go through the main sections, because as I said, I want you to actually take lead on some of the base yourself. I'll get it to the full armour point, I'll take it to midway through how it's built and through the actual build itself, and the rest you can take away as ideas and tips of how you can actually do stuff. As you can see now, I am armouring all of this just to show you exactly what it looked like and how you get the solid 15 rockets for the core. You don't have to worry about doing your TC in armoured, you can if you wish, however, personally, I think if someone gets in this far, they're probably going to go all the way, so it's, it, you're just wasting HQM and upkeep, but depends how many, if you've got two or three in here and you're just living in a squeeze, then you might want to do all of the armoured inside, even the floor, but I, I personally think it would be too much. Now this can be quite an annoying jump. In twig, make, you can use stairs, this will allow you to get up and down when, when your actual roof piece isn't in place. It is annoying, you can put a furnace down as well, but it means you have to pick it up and repl replenish it every time. I recommend you using twig, it's a lot easier. Now for the upper floor, you're just literally going to put walls all the way around. Start from your half walls you put in place, and just put them all the way in. Now. Make sure if you're doing stone, they're not backwards. I'll fix that one in a second. Just take it all the way around and just wrap it just the same as the core itself. This means you can start functioning up. I'd probably try and get the front of the base done and just lock down the outer rim with doors for the time being. This will not take you long to build. Now, the armoured core side, yes, I think it will. 
depending on how you play. A lot of people scrap a hell of a lot of stuff. If you're one of those people, you'll probably find this a lot easier. Now, farming HQM, if you're in a populated area, can be a lot longer than actually scrapping. So if you don't scrap, I recommend you maybe start. Now, this section here, you can put a shotgun trap in place if you wish. It's just like a last stand. So something gets in, it takes them out. We'll stick a trap in here now. It's one of those, if you want to sacrifice a bit of strength, it's completely up to you. I would recommend it because it could be the thing that saves you as you're coming back online because 90% of raids are offline now. It's just, it's how people are. There's nothing you can do about it. So I'll just put the other skin on now. And then I'll go around and I'll show you all the foundations that you have to metal up. That is critical making sure all the foundations are metal because it's just going to add to the rocket count if anyone tries to foundation it. That is the easiest and quickest way to try and take out a bunker base is hit the foundations. Now if you're putting 8 plus 15, you look at 23 rockets, now that's a lot and depending on what you've got at the time, it's a big gamble for them to go through that way. Now go through doors, depending on if you've got armoured doors as well, this could rake up to at least 30 rockets depending on how dumb they are and which way they raid it. Again, we're going to make sure we have metal floors and all the floors on the way up, so if they try and just shoot down, it's going to cost them a lot to do it. Now, I don't mind getting raided, honestly I don't care, as long as they've had to work for it. Now, if you create a base which is literally four rockets and you're in, you won't get yourself to blame. So you need to make sure you farm and you cook up all the metal frags you've got and just strengthen those foundations massively. Never leave a foundation which leads straight into your loot room because they'll just take that out straight away and they're in. It's critical that you make sure you have some sort of honeycomb foundation in place just to slow that down. Now, as I said before, this area for me was complete dead space. I didn't see the point in wasting too much stuff in here. This is just to basically slow them down. As a solo player, if I play solo or as a duo, we tend to just use everything we have when we actually have it. We try not to stockpile too much stuff unless it's for the TC. Other than that, it's use it or lose it because, as I said before, with the amount of offline raiding that happens, it just doesn't make sense to keep a hold of it for no reason at all. Rust is that kind of game where, especially if you're a solo or a very small group, the clans are always going to try and get those bases. Um, and the last fight we were on, we literally got offline. There was only way they could actually do it. There's a group of five or six, and they literally waited for us to go offline before they even raided. Um, and it took them like three hours to do it until one of us came back on. It's just, unfortunately, it's the way Rust has went. Now, these bits here, again, this is just adding extra protection to where the armoured is. So if they blow out the wall, Four rockets, then they're straight into the armoured. This will add another eight rockets to that section, so it means you can leave the outer skin of walls above the foundation as stone. You may not want to do this, but I highly recommend it. Do it for all the triangles. It's just, honestly, it will pay dividends in the end if someone just tries to take the walls out and try to split through. It means they're going to have to go through sheet metal and stone and armour. It's just adding to that actual rocket count. So guys, I'm going to leave the commentary there. I'm going to let it play through. Everything else is quite self-explanatory. The key points that I want you to make are how to strengthen this core to the maximum. Again, try and use garage doors where possible because again, that will help massively. If you've got armoured double doors, definitely use them. Don't go absolute mad because you don't want your HQM upkeep being too high. Thanks for stopping by guys. I'll catch you in the next one.
Dracula. 